in 2015, Nigerian farmers and agricultural enthusiasts need to focus not just on production, but also getting agricultural products to, be, to the final consumers, which I think should be the goal. That should be the focus. That is what's, that's something you should have in mind when starting agribusiness in the first place. Yeah. Um, the value addition, it's crucial. Yeah. Uh, and that's where you make um, good margins. You are not in a hurry to sell. Mm. Uh, yeah, because that, that's very crucial. Because if, if you don't plan to add value, then you have to be in a rush to sell. So uh, value addition is everything. Or connecting to the value uh, addition, mm -hmm. uh, the processors and co is very crucial. It's, yeah. it's really crucial. Um, however, we don't, many people focus on a, a, a component of the chain. Mm -hmm. So it's a chain. Yeah, obviously. You must plug into the chain. Mm -hmm. You can't get involved in all the chain. Or plug into the chain mm. find out where there's demand and plug in your supply mm -hmm. and that's where you know i have i have questions as regards to this topic of ours today now before we had mechanized processing plants what were the steps farmers took for value addition before prior to all of this well so there's specialization across the value chain so the farmer's job is to produce mm -hmm. the aggregator's job is to get it together and while the processors were somewhere else. Okay. Um, mostly, processors were not so far from the farmers. So what that, what that did was to make sure that the time of harvest to the mm. processing plant was very short. Yeah. So the quality would get to them, you know, better. Yeah. So at that time, everybody specialized. Mm. You know, so, so some were specialized in making the jute bags for the likes of cocoa, granuts, and coal. So specialization was crucial and everybody plugged into a chain uh, so it wasn't that you would um, rare chicken and you would have to transport it to the market mm. people would come to the farm and that's why they call it farm gate price people will come to the farm to buy off you so your attention is given the best on the farm so the transporters also give attention to that so everybody just plugged in mm. and specialized but right now you have to go one or two steps uh, further. further yeah. yeah, I prefer the old way. Of doing yeah, uh, but well, um, one of the things I do say is the reality is, if we got it right all the way, these opportunities won't be there now. Mm. The developed countries are looking for, uh, they're looking backward to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So what is common to us is what they call organic. Ooh. You know, so uh, like my favorite quote: "Out of every adversity." comes a greater or equal opportunity provided you can find it that's by napoleon hill mm. in his great book think and grow rich so uh and okay let me move off a bit you know the okada that's a good quote or, by the way yeah it, it, the okada ban uh has put in a lot of stress on a lot of people mm -hmm. uh we feel it at work because many of our stops now our resumption is like 9 30 wow. to accommodate them coming but however uh, with that quote being with me for almost 20 years, three days into any challenge, I stopped talking about the challenge and I ask, where's the opportunity? Mm. So for people who are engaged in production, the opportunity there is uh, your farm labors that come from Benin Republic and Togo and they represent a chunk of the farm labor now. Guess what happens? They take bikes. Their annual wage is bike. Mm. So with this ban now, the price of bikes will really, really go down. And the bike, uh, motorcycle merchants will just want to make mm. their cost and move on. Mm. So it helps many of us to go and buy the bikes now and just keep. <laughs> Agri African farmer. <laughs> yeah, That's so an interesting thing. Out of every adversity mm. comes a greater or equal opportunity provided we can find it. Sure. You know, so very soon we are, we are hoping and praying that we'll have electricity. So what would happen to the generators? We have to move it to the war zones, the Sudan. They yeah. will need more electricity and all. So, you know, we just need to think ahead and not stay too long in, in the challenge. Yeah. You know? So we at work we now, to move on and find yeah, they have to close earlier. And go, so, yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so with the huge investments going on in the value chain that we've spoken about in different agricultural products, such as tomato juice, for example, I found them on Twitter. Yeah. I wanted to tell you last week, but <laughs> that wasn't our discussion, so I didn't want to bring it in. Mm. You know, like all them dangote tomatoes restarting operations, what can modular processors of tomato do, you know, do to position themselves properly? Yeah, there's a place for everybody. Yeah. You can't compete. There's a level for the big boys. Mm. You know, so they operate big equipment. What they chunk out is huge. But there's always what you call the small business advantage. Do they stand a the chance? They do. And the, you know, what the challenge is that the small businesses try to compete with the big businesses. They don't have the expertise. They don't have the network. The market. They don't have the market. They don't have a lot of things. So stay with what you have and find your niche. Mm. Your niche is, if you are small, the people who are looking, who are getting healthy foods, who are paying attention to healthy foods, many of them right now will prefer to buy from you because they believe they can trace the food back. Mm. So there's a target market for everyone. So don't go into the red ocean, like I say. The commercial people <laughs> will have to fortify and do everything to keep it longer. Mm. The small scale can turn it around is, yeah, fast. Yeah. The, 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 the uh, process, someone will sign in the big companies, you take all the decisions on the spot. So hmm. there's a small business advantage that small SMEs need to plug in. The big shots cannot play at that level, so leverage that level. Hmm. Well said, well said, well said. So why are agri enthusiasts normally focused on production aspects of agriculture? Yeah, because... Why are they not paying attention to the value addition and packaging? The value addition aspect is also a bit technical because you have to um, tidy up your supply chain. Supply chain, you have to be sure that what they are supplying is quality. You, you do deal with more levies. As a farmer, you get away with a lot of things because no tax the tax men will not come to your farm mm. <laughs> to locate you. Okay. You know, so you can get away with a lot of things. Okay. Uh, and I'm not saying don't pay your taxes. Please, that. <laughs> Please pay, pay your taxes. Your taxes. Yeah. But but it's it's easier for you to navigate end to end. There's no electricity challenge coming up mm -hmm. when, when you are farming. So it's easier. You can plug in or map the, the, the chart. One plus one is two. But with electricity, you can't guarantee that you have it generator you have to depend on uh the mechanic so there are a lot of you know logistics involved mm -hmm. but if you just get it right what happens is that you make more money than the farmer yeah but then again back to the farmers and the need to plug in and invest in the final produce do you think that's something they can outsource oh yeah um so the way it really works is you don't find any value person adding value uh, staying in isolation okay. in agri you have to backward integrate you have to partner or collaborate you can't do it alone you can't say and most of the big companies why they fail and I use the word fail why they fail because many of them shut down eventually why they shut down is that they don't pay attention to the farmer when the prices are low they take advantage of them mm. so when the prices are high the farmers also sell elsewhere so uh, they take advantage of a lot of the, uh, of the farmers and so the farmers are not committed but the big uh, are the ones that care about the welfare of the farmers if it's you if it's taking money 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 and, and you know let, let me demystify this value addition Please. It, it sounds big and so value addition is primarily uh you uh, a few years ago few maybe 14 years back now that's a lot of years ago yeah <laughs> over a decade now so i went to abe okuta you know this round kokoro this uh, corn snack is white okay yeah so i just found it i found okay, it's not in lagos anywhere so i bought some repackaged three in um ikeja plaza by that computer village roundabout there and my staff you know began to sell it our salary was fifteen thousand per month then and she was selling 14,500. Wow. <laughs> so she would, during a one hour break, she would go and sell on wow. behalf of the company. Really? Yeah. And so we were doing that and we were selling elsewhere. And I went to Obomosho. There's this ad snack 
you know, beans, uh, no sugar, and co healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it uh, akarabuma show. Okay. And so I told them, don't make it that hard. Make it softer. Mm -hmm. Make it chewable for Lagosians. Yeah. They, don't, they don't have good <laughs> strong teeth. <laughs> and, and they made it. And we packaged it and we rebranded it as K A R A, Kara. And people were buying. And people were buying. You know what you're talking about? There's this thing we used to eat back in the day we were called Popo Gari. Okay, yeah. I wish in Lagos <laughs> I can find Popo Gari. I wish I didn't have to go all the way to you know the warrior delta state to find it just imagine that's being repackaged here rebranded i could find it in the supermarket, supermarket. at very cheap price i just go buy Popo gary or 100 naira and so or in traffic even when we hear value addition we build this castle around no, it you know in nigeria i always say the difference between dundu and yamarita is packaging is packaging and the way they process it. <laughs> the difference between plantain chips and uh, what do we call it? Pekere. Pekere. <laughs> it's packaging. Yeah, so and all that is value addition. Yeah, yeah. Just change how it is mm. to look different. I think that's part of innovation. Yeah. Do you think the, the, the farmers have that education and awareness of the importance that you know it brings to the their farmers? The farmers don't have to have that awareness. Oh. Yeah, it's not their business. The business is to produce the raw material that others, when they think, they can add value. Value addition is just turning yam to pounded yam. The price you pay for pounded yam is different from the price you pay for yam. Mm. And as simple as that, that's value addition. But taking it further now is to now say, okay, how can I get it on the shelves? That's where you need a bit of more uh, technology, uh, and packaging. So I, I still have more questions. I hope you don't mind. No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. That's so African here. farmers. So you're saying that me, for example, I'm not a farmer. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, this popo berry, just to use an as, an as an example, if I go find where it's done, mm -hmm. and I bring about an innovative way of packaging it yeah. and bringing it to the Lagos market, that would be value addition. That's value and addition. I would make a lot of money off of it. Because some people also want it. Yeah. You see, what, what happens is that many of us, when they brought back the brand Chocomilo, mm -hmm. why is 